Thank you for kind introduction, Mr. Chairman. And uh, it's my honor, pleasure to be invited here. I thank the Medistim company. Japan is a far away country from uh, Europe, but uh, E-Act meeting, actually my favorite. I think that Professor Arai would say the same thing. My name is Asai, his name is Arai. A bit confusing, but uh, it's, we are good friends. So let me talk uh, my story. This is a famous picture of uh, Hokusai Ukiyo-e, we have a long history which uh, interventional cardiologists overwhelmed cardiac surgeon. So this is actually became a reality in the Western world as well. Then, however, we have trying to improve our uh, surgery and uh, as as the middle of the uh, 1990s, we have a real hot discussion how to develop less invasive approach to the coronary artery bypass. This is a graph for the uh, application of uh, off-pump surgery in isolated coronary artery bypass in Japan. At least more than eight years, we have had um, over 60% of isolated um, bypass. Uh, performed by off-pump all over Japan. At the beginning stage, we established the, some small uh, study group, which including Professor Arai and my, myself, we bring video to the meeting. We very uh, heartily dis discussing about the de technical detail and outcome of the technique of off-pump technique, off-pump bypass. The reason for the off-pump, off-pump having some concern of quality these days. However, the main reason for the high quality off-pump is actually elegantly described by Dr. John Pascas at the Emory University uh, three years ago. Annals of thoracic surgery nicely demonstrate this graph. So this x-axis is a predicted risk of mortality, and y-axis represents for observed mortality. The mortality of on-pump bypass and off-pump bypass actually diverged when the predicted mortal risk of mortality is high. We have more and more elderly patients, more and more uh, comorbid patients uh, all over Japan. So this is uh, actually the fate to go into. Our OPCAB practice has been concentrating on off-pump uh, practice as well as uh, not reduced quality, not compromising off-pump, trying to achieve a better quality than conventional uh, surgery. And we have been using the transit time prometry and epi aortic scanning for more than 10 years. Now, we have a very QC system. The new system was introduced and two years ago. In this presentation, we'd like to demonstrate our clinical outcome and the specific case greatly helped by the very QC. There's some paper. The, I think the concern for the off-pump, especially in the CRBG quality, a 20 to 25% of failure of conduit reported these days. Perioperative graft failure is about 10%. This is a famous Ruby study group that we can interpret intraoperative graft assessment play an important role to confirm the graft patency, especially in a developing surgeon graft patency and the function. So if we aim for better coronary artery surgery, quality improvement of CAB is very crucial because this is the only intervention which we can protect or we can elongate the longevity as well as uh, 
I think, prevention of myocardial infarction, which PCI uh, does not have. So graft conduit selection, as uh, Mr. Chairman mentioned, we have more arterial graft, skeletonized two mammary rather than one, or maybe gastroepiploic as an arterial conduit as well. And more importantly, proper selection of the grafting, which means avoiding arteriotomy in a bad area of the target vessel. Not only searching the target vessel, I think we really have to get the best part of the artery for the arteriotomy. I still remember when I was in New York University and the residency uh, attendings let me do a many, many anastomosis, but I don't remember, I never make a single arteriotomy. Arteriotomy was responsible for the senior attending. We are just sewing monkey. <laughs> well, anyway, that's, uh, I think arteriotomy is quite important. And to detail the information of the war, I think very QC play a very important role. Graft confirmation is, of course, imp important. This is routinely done at many facilities in Japan, and uh, preferably prior to chest closure in uh, all uh, facilities. So this is an example of our arterial graft for the CABG. We use the arterial graft for the left circulation to mammary. You see the sequential bypass to circumflex area. This is gastroepiploic, and seven years after, this is not as bad. As compared to native coronary artery, we are surprised these conduit entirely different from coronary artery. So this is a paper from uh, Professor Dijan Marco, very famous paper, which we know that's post-operative, no, actually intraoperative assessment is a gold standard for the good quality control. So new machine BLQC has additional value of a Doppler echo with 2D mode, color mode, and pulse wave mode. This probe is very compact and handy, easy to use. We put the sonar aid or some sort of gel, so contact could be easily achieved. It doesn't require dissecting and circling the target artery under study. So that crystal arranged in 45 degree, the flow towards this direction, displayed in red, flow away from the transducer, displayed in blue. This is one of the JPEG picture, which we see is turbulence there. This is another application for the transverse scanning. We see uh, two circles becomes snowman or figure of eight to become a distal artery and other circular things. This is another interesting mode. So this is one of the paper of one of my junior um, fellow presented in Los Angeles this year. Let me just introduce the detection of the epicardial ultrasound. I uh, mean, detection of a non superficial vessel. So we have about 90 consecutive patients isolated CABG. Average age was 68, and the emergency case included 24 patients. We routinely use this system to detect a target vessel and the suitable anastomotic site in the operation. Anytime if we don't see clearly the where is the most uh, appropriate site. Two groups were divided depending on whether they used epicardial ultrasound uh, to detect non-superficial vessel or not used. Not used means uh, all target site clearly uh, visualized from uh, uh, epicardium. 
So we analyze the impact of introducing the epicardial ultrasound in terms of operative outcome. So even off-pump application, which I think is a space between the chest wall, uh, no, a pericardium to the lateral wall, it's about three centimeter. But this compact probe is easily, man I mean, utilized to locate intramyocardial vessel. This is a target site, about six millimeter depth. This is difficult for, especially in off-pump bypass, because that's little bleeding from the branches of vein really uh, obstructing the operative field for the anastomosis. We really have to take care of the small bleeding. We have to go right into the, above the uh, target site. So very QC is quite important, especially in off-pump fashion. So the result, uh, uh, there was 14 patients, but 16% of patients have somehow uh, buried arteries. The one patient have two buried arteries, so the location of the target site is 15. And two out of three patients, uh, no, two out of three target vessel was located left anterior descending area. There was no preoperative profile difference. Surgical result. Operation time was significantly longer in the group of epicardial ultrasound group. However, in both group, we could achieve 100% of complete revascularization in both groups. Post-operative outcome, there's no significant difference. So actually, there's no difference. That means in any buried, embedded target site, we could consistently perform the surgery the same way. By using high-frequency epicardial ultrasound, all patients underwent off-pump complete revascularization without conversion to cardiopulmonary bypass during operation. High-frequency epicardial ultrasound is useful in off-pump coronary artery surgery. This is the data. Let me introduce just uh, one specific case what would you do for this case? This was a patient, I think it's a six months ago. It was a very sick patient, 78-year-old man, who received a coronary, double coronary artery bypass by saphenous pain seven years ago. That right coronary artery bypass was uh, it's already occluded a long time ago, and uh, already graft is severely stenosed, presented with sudden deterioration angina and severe congestive heart failure with a very reduced LV function. Transferred from another hospital with IABP, it's almost intubated, but well, was not intubated yet. Congestion and renal failure. This is a picture. The native coronary artery the left, we barely see any vessel. The right coronary artery, complete occlusion of the mid-right portion. This is a uh, saphenous vein. You clearly see the severe stenosis, the mid-portion of the left vein. And after anastomosis, there is 99% of occlusion. With, and uh, right circulation or maybe part of the circumflex is just uh, dimly stained. So angiogram is a standard for our information, but angiogram itself is not enough for the, some patient uh, to detect the coronary. Uh, so this patient also have very sick uh, atherosclerotic aorta. I found this area was very clean, exceptionally clean. Posterior wall was also slightly diseased. However, this surface was used for a, a device anastomosis proximal, saphenous vein.
But there is no information, diagonal, obtuse marginal, and postlateral, where we could clearly demonstrate these target vessel, even with a very thickened, some calcified wall, where we could find the best part for the anastomosis. So we finally, we did five distals, Rita LED, surface vein to diagonal to marginal and posterolateral PDA. It was uh, too many sequential grafting, but I think it's, it was enough for him. Transit time assessment was done. 90 milliliter per minute was quite a good flow. This is a luxury demonstration of another company's product. Since this patient didn't have a, a post-operative angiogram because of renal insufficiency, we were lucky we could check that another mode of uh, assessment. So target vessel assessment, occasionally, um, even a preoperative coronary angiogram is not enough, it's not adequate especially subacute occlusion of a vessel, which very few uh, collateral uh, circulation, and also reoperation was more complicated. In order to perform best quality of CABG, intraoperative epicardial scanning is of great value. Target vessel information, as Mr. Chairman mentioned, location of depths, of course, and also very important, I, I believe, that the relation to the other structure, like uh, branch of veins, uh, intramyocard, I mean, heart muscle, adipose tissue, RV cavity, especially in the LV, uh, LAD location. Coronary artery wall information is also we should uh, pay attention. Luminal size, luminal shape, and uh, maybe occluded or thickening calcification. So this information is uh, unique for this equipment. Not we can get from angiogram. So the question is not whether angiogram or varicose is better. These two are complementary and helping to achieve better coronary revascularization. So I would summarize, we found VQC as extremely helpful in intramyocardial target vessel and reoperation coronary revascularization. Selection of the best target site is crucially important for the high quality revascularization. VQC has played an important role, especially in the sickest patient group. Unique protective effect of CABG, which is uh, distinctly different from even the latest drug editing stenting, um, increasingly evident. So that's quality of the bypass is a key. We can protect myocardial infarction and cardiac death. Very QC is uh, therefore becoming increasingly, increasingly important in the current and the future CABG whoever want to perform it better than yesterday. Let me just conclude with this. I think it's uh, using VQC is like uh, driving a car with a rear view mirror. You not can drive a Mercedes without a rear view mirror. When you get, do you, anybody ask that, do you need evidence-based medicine for that? Thank you very much.